Hey there, so what I have here is a single view application that I've made for the iPhone. And on our main storyboard, of course, it is blank right now. And when we're done, we're going to have a segmented controller. Now, from this code that we create, you will understand how to make a custom segmented controller. This will make sense to you and we'll be able to add this onto the stage with a couple of constraints and everything will work perfectly. All we're going to need is one extra file here, which is going to be our class for our advanced segmented controller. And this is just a basic form of that controller. So what we'll do is we'll click new file and we'll create a new Swift file and we'll call it segmented control.swift and we'll save it. And in our segmented control, it's going to import foundation. We're going to want to import UI kit. So what's going to make this able to drag onto the storyboard is if we use this IB designable here. And we'll just call this segmented control. And we want this to inherit from a regular UI control. And this is how you can create things to go on to the storyboard because when it inherits from the UI control, that's what all the other controls on your storyboard inherit from. So what we're going to need is we're going to need some labels to label this with. So let's say there's item one, two, and three. So we're going to make a private variable called labels, and that's going to be an array of UI labels. So once we make those UI labels, we're going to also make the items that we're going to put into here, which is an array of items. Now we could use type inference to uh, do this, but we'll just make it a little more verbose. So we'll say item one, item two, item three. We're gonna pay attention to when it gets set, did set. And when it gets set, we're gonna call a function called setup labels. Now in setup labels, we're going to set up the actual labels that we need. So we're going to create a function called setup labels. And in setup labels, we're going to loop through all the labels in our group of labels that we've made. And in that, all we're going to say is label.remove from superview. Okay. Once we remove that from the superview, we can also remove all the labels from the array of UI labels. So we're going to make sure that everything is blank and we're going to set keep capacity to true. Then we're going to loop through all of the items that we have. So we're going to say for index in one, two items dot count. Then we can say, let's create a label here, which is a new UI label. And we're going to use this frame, which is going to be a CG rect zero. And that's a rectangle with a location at zero, zero, a height and width of zero. You can set the text of this label to be the text from items, and it's going to be index minus one. And then we can set the text alignment really easily. We could say text alignment is equal to dot center, which is an enum that's available to us from UI kit. And we can say label dot text color. And all this can be customized. You can do whatever you want with this. We'll just use a new UI color and we will set it to be white 0.5 and alpha 1.0. So it's not going to be transparent at all. And then we'll add it as a sub view to this UI control. We'll say add the label as a sub view. And then to our list of labels, we'll say append this new label. So we've basically created a label and added it to an array of labels and then just set up some basic properties of it. Another really important property of our segmented control is to have a selected index. This makes things really easy to say item one is selected and then it will highlight that once we visualize that. We'll also do a did set here, which makes this super convenient. And we'll create a function called display new selected index make some extra room so you can see, create a function called display new selected index. And in there, we're going to create this label, or we're going to reference the label from our list of labels. And we're going to use the selected index. 
So now we have the label at the selected index. And what we can say is to set the thumb view, which we haven't created yet, frame equal to the label dot frame. And that will put everything in the right position. So since we don't have our thumb view, let's create our thumb view. Right underneath our list of labels, we can create a thumb view, which is going to be equal to a new UI view. And when we initially get into this application, it's going to need to call some initialization methods. So let's create the function that all the initialization methods are going to call first, and then we'll create the initializers or the constructors. So we'll create a function called setup view, and we'll say layer, which is part of the UI control, dot corner radius is going to be equal to frame dot height divided by two. And then we can say layer dot border color is going to be equal to a new UI color. And of course, you can customize this as much as you want. It's going to be equal to 1.0 and alpha is going to be equal to 0 0.5. And we need to get the CG color out of that. And then from there, we can say layer dot border width is equal to two. So now we've created a little bit of a border here. And we can say background color, which is a property that's available to us, is equal to UI color dot clear color. And then we can say set up labels, which we already created. And then we can also say insert sub view. And we want to insert a sub view at an index. So we're going to use the thumb view. That's what we're going to insert. And we're going to insert that at index zero. So we make sure that the order that they sit on the sort of stage that you're looking at is correct. Now we need to create our two initializers that are required or that may be called by creating a UI control. So we'll create override init. And we're going to do init with a frame as a CG rect. And we got to make sure that we call the super init. And that's going to be past the frame. We can just call setup view. And we'll create one more initializer. And we can call this a required constructor or initializer. And we'll use the coder, which is an NS coder. Let's fix this here. Or super init. And we can pass the coder NS coder. And then we can also call setup view once more. That has to be coder. Then we can pass setup view and we're good to go here. Now there are two methods that we need to override in order for things to work properly. One is to lay out the sub views and the other is to listen for the touch or respond to the touch. So let's deal with the begin tracking with touch function. And that's going to be begin tracking with touch. And if you just start typing, we'll get everything we need. And it gave me one more override here. And we want to get the location of where they touched, which is going to be equal to touch dot location in view. And we're going to pass that self. And then we need to get the calculated index. And that's going to be an integer optional. We haven't set it yet. And then we can loop through all the labels. And we want to get the index and the item in enumerate. We're going to enumerate through those labels. What we can say is if item.frame.contains, and we want to look for that location. And that location should be a CG point. So we can pass in the location. So if the frame contains that point, we know that we can now set the calculated index to be the current index. What we can say is if the calculated index is not equal to nil, meaning we set it, then we'll set the selected index to be the calculated index. And we know that it's set so we can force that value out. And then we can call send actions for control events. And we'll pass that, that a value has changed. Everything is going to work properly in this situation. And then otherwise, at the end, we'll just return false. Once we have that begin tracking with touch all set up here, we can 
go into our layout subviews function and we can just type layout subviews. This doesn't take anything or return anything, but we do want to make sure that we call super dot layout subviews. So then we'll get the selected frame, which is going to be equal to self dot bounds. We can create a new width, which is going to be equal to a CG rect get width, and we can use the selected frame that we just got. And all we need to do is divide that by a CG float with the number of items. So items dot count. Then we can say select frame dot size dot width that's equal to the new width. And then we can set up our thumb view. So we can say thumb view dot frame is equal to that select frame. And then we can say thumb view dot background color is equal to whatever you want. So we'll just make ours white. Thumb view dot layer dot corner radius is going to be equal to, we're going to get a nice rounded corner radius by saying thumb view dot frame dot height divided by two. And that'll give us a perfectly rounded edge. So now what we can do is we can set our label height. So we'll create a label height here, which is equal to self dot bounds dot height. And we'll create a label width, which is going to be equal to self dot bounds dot width divided by CG float and a float of the labels dot count. And then we can loop through all of our labels. So we can say for index in zero, two, and including labels dot count minus one. And for each one of these, we can grab the label at the index. So we'll say label is equal to labels and the label at that index. So now we have a label and we can get the X position here, that's equal to a CG float of the index times the label width. So that's going to be where we place this on the X coordinate. And then label.frame is going to be equal to CG rect make. And we're going to place it on the actual X position here. The Y is going to be zero. The width is going to be label width. And the height is going to be label height. So we basically needed to get all of those variables together so that in the end we could call label.frame and put everything in the right position. And we can go over to our storyboard and we can give this a try here. Since we used white for everything, let's set our background color to be some sort of, let's say, dark gray or light gray. So now we're in our storyboard, we can go over here and grab a new UI view drag it onto the screen and resize it. Let's take it all the way out to the edge here. Center it. Bring it up like that. And all we need to do is set the class to our new segmented control and we get those items one, two, and three. Let's just set a couple of constraints, one to the top space, one to the trailing space, one to the leading space, and then we'll just set one that is its own height. And that should complete the constraints and we can run this. You can see that now we have items one, two, and three. And with a little more work, you'll have these nice and animated and smoothly moving between each other, but they look really good. And obviously you can bring this into your view controller and customize these even further.